Hey there, lovely people. Welcome back to another Story Study Saturday. I am Sammy, and I like to go through stories to see what we can learn from them when we read them from a writer's perspective. This week, I want to talk to you about Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but we're going with it. I'll be honest, I haven't heard very much about this book in general out in the world of literary information that I've been interacting with a lot more lately, but I discovered this book because it was on somebody's want to read list and they made a video and they showed the cover of like books they recently bought. I don't remember who did it, but I saw the cover and I was like, ooh, that's a cool cover. And it's pretty cool cover. Like if that doesn't draw you in, I don't know what will. I literally judge this based off of its cover. And I've been doing that a lot lately, just going off of recommendations and the title and the author at times. So I was going into this the way that I go into most books where I don't really expect anything, but I am in it for the ride. And I have to say, while I'm not like blown away by this book, I am still pretty glad that I read it. It was fun to read. I gave it about a three stars on Goodreads because of a bunch of stuff, but it very much so has YA readership in it more so than other YA books that I've read. And I've been interacting with a lot more new adult content than I have been with YA recently. So I don't know if it's just that I have a little bit of a step out of the YA writing style, but it took me a while to get into the groove of the, I don't wanna say simpler, but I don't know of a better word. So it took me a while to get into the simpler writing style that comes in the territory of YA most of the time. So just getting adjusted to that was my main issue, but that could be entirely personal. It doesn't have to be from the book. So let's talk about my general notes on the story. I think the magic system in it is super interesting because it's this like ancient magic that comes from King Arthur's time. In this era, King Arthur was real and they cast this magic spell and now magic is constant. And it's super interesting because there's multiple cultures interweaving with the same magic system that it's so unique and surprisingly easy to follow for how much of a soft magic system it is. There's no real understanding of what their powers are and how they work, but you do understand how they interact with their powers. That was really confusing, but I feel like that's just sort of how describing soft magic systems is. So I'm sorry in advance. This book also has that YA trope where the kids have to save the world because we're in a YA book and kids can save the world and that's how that works. But, but they give a reason and it's like a smart reason. It's a, it's a reason that I have no issues with because they're saying that this power can only develop in a descendant of one of the Knights of the Round Table when they're in a certain age range. And that age range is from like 16 to 22 or whatever it is. So like these kids are literally there to save the world because they have to be. That's in the rules of the magic. And that's the beauty of the soft magic system because the little bit that we know, we have to understand. And that's what we understand. And we know that kids have to save the world. It also follows a super intelligent, confident, I assume probably beautiful and emotionally unstable black girl who is in this advanced college program and she gets to walk through this Southern Carolina, South Carolina, I think it's South Carolina. I don't remember what state it is, but it's South, um, South in America, not South America, Southern American state. She goes into this advanced college program and she interacts with this world that has such a history with slavery and like the black history of the actual campus. And then she goes into this ancient society, this white boys club, basically, and interacts with them in this such, it's such a powerful way for her to be, just be. Cause she's a very, very powerful black girl in this white world. And it's really great to see that the way that our main character thinks she looks at the world from a black perspective. Obviously our author is a black woman and she said that this is sort of to relate to her experience growing up, but put a mystical twist on it, which is another way of saying I wanted to write the story so that I could experience it, but that's fine. If you need to process your grief, you should. But the way that she goes through this white dominant world that she's integrating herself into, we see it from the perspective of someone who knows the 
racial history and has that sense of this wasn't made for me. I was not supposed to ever be in here in the position that I'm in. And it draws attention to any time that POC characters, even if they're just side characters, to the point that they are always side characters, are being mistreated in the area. She's addressed by a parent as if she were working there, and it draws her attention to the staff and how the staff is all brown and black people and how none of them are white and how everyone in the room but her who is not serving staff is white. And it's just really great to see that mental process where a lot of people don't really think about it, but when you are a person of color, you notice it and it draws attention to it. And this really ex exonerates that experience. You don't have to be a person of color to read and enjoy this book. And you will learn something about a person of color's experience through reading this book. And I think that's really great that that's done. Even though her race does play a big role into how the story interacts with her, it's not the main point of the story. It, it's a big, big factor. But the main point is her going through what she needs to go through to deal with her mother's death. Her race just has the same impact on the story as it would if she was going through the same thing in real life. And it's not a story about being a black girl. It's a story about being a girl whose mother died and how you process that. I am not going to give any spoilers, but I will say this book has a hell of a twist at the end to the point that I had to reread it because I was I I was falling asleep when I was finishing this book. I was just trying to get through it and pull through so I didn't have to keep reading it in the morning because I was so close. And um, the twist hit so fast and then I kept reading and then I was like, oh, hold up, what? Then I went back, reread the section with the twist in it, absolutely lost my mind and then really appreciated the twist because wow that's all I'm gonna I'm gonna stop myself there before anything leaks out because that is just who how would you what are the chances what do I think could be improved on I think that the writing obviously based on what I said earlier could be a little bit more confident it felt like there there was a lack of something I don't know what it is I couldn't put my finger on it but there was definitely a lack of something in the writing that made it feel less I don't know. There's something about the writing that I just feel like needed a little more oomph. That could just be that I'm not used to YA right now, you know? I think that several of the side characters could have used a little bit more development. Some of the more important side characters more so, like Cell, the Merlin descendant, Alice, our main character's roommate, and Patricia, the main character's therapist. I felt like there were a lot of things that made them feel like they were real, and then other things that felt like they were relying pretty heavily on, like, stereotypes. I just think they, they could have had a little bit more digging into who they are and how their individual story mattered to the main character's story. It does get a lot better towards the end of the book. We start to see more character development, specifically from Cell and Alice, because we didn't interact with them more and we don't really interact with Patricia that much at the end. But seeing them at the end versus how they were at the beginning, it kind of makes them at the beginning feel a lot more flat than they probably would have if they were just consistently characterized or if they were more characterized the whole way through. I think something that we can learn from this story for sure is what it's like to put together conflicting methods of using magic. The character that we follow in this story interacts with two different forms of the exact same magic, technically. So one of them is this ancient magic from King Arthur, and then one of them is an ancestral magic. You interact with your ancestors and borrow their magic where King Arthur style is taking the magic and using the magic. It's the same worldly energy that comes into play in both of the magic systems, but one does it in a way that is non-renewable and then the other does it in a way that is regenerative. So by going through and seeing these two separate forms of magic and having a character that interacts with them both, you get to really juxtapose those magics and see what kind of powers you can develop 
by having two different forms of the same magic. And I think that's really interesting. And if you're trying to develop something magic based, it might be interesting to play with how do different people use it? How do different cultures use it? If you have a story that follows a character who is black, how do the black people use it? How do the white people use it? That's pretty much how I feel this story went. And I think that's really interesting to think of if you're trying to come up with cultural values to associate with your magic. Do all of your different cultures need to have a different magic or do they just have different values in the way that they use magic? I think that would be really fun to explore in your own developments of magic systems. This would especially work for soft magic systems because there don't need to be as many rules for a soft magic system as there do for a harder magic system. So it doesn't, it's fun to explore how those different things can work for a soft magic system, but knowing how it works is a little bit, little bit more complicated. So I guess that's what you get when you judge a book by its cover because I didn't mind it. I had a fine time. It was three stars, three star experience, maybe three and a half if I'm being a little bit generous. I thought the twist at the end really bumped it up for sure. So three and a half because of that twist. I found out that there's gonna be a second book. So I'm honestly kind of curious to see how that continues on because there's plenty of room for it to continue on, but I don't know how I would do it. So I would, I'm, I'm interested to see how that second book comes out because it's definitely unique. It's a very unique story premise. And I think we need to have more stories that follow characters who are just going about their lives, going through their things. And it could just be that I'm not looking for them. I have started to be drawn to books with covers that have black people on them because I find it really interesting because most of the time people just automatically assume that the character is white or looks like themselves or mostly is white because even when you describe a character as non-white, like in The Hunger Games, how they described Rue multiple times as having dark colored skin and like being the same color as the other character from her area. People who read the book and focused on the descriptions knew that she was black, but people were so upset that she was black in the movie and she was light skinned in the movie. She wasn't dark like she was in the book. I digress. We perceive characters more often as white because it's what we expect it's what media says we should look for. So I've been drawn more to books that have black people on the covers because there's no way that you can assume that they are not black. And I think that that is gonna be really interesting to start reading more books like that. I guess that's all I have to say on Legendborn. I am looking forward to the second one. Let me know if you've read Legendborn. What were your thoughts on it? Do you have any book recommendations that have a really cool cover that you think I would want to read? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a little book chat. And I will see you again on Tuesday for a Writing Tip Tuesday. I'm back again on Saturday for another Story Study Saturday.